Now that we've taken the idea of a wave and we've applied it to electromagnetic radiation and we can talk about the speed of light and utilize that in a problem and convert between wavelength and frequency for light. Now we're going to look at a property of light that is um, called interference. Now this is really a property of any wave, but we're looking at it um, for light itself. What is interference? Interference is the way waves interact with each other, okay? So um, if you've ever been out on a lake and you've seen the boats going by on the lake and they've got their wake or their waves coming out and they come and they crash into each other, that would be an interference, how they interact with each other. And there's two main ways to think about this. There is what's called constructive interference. In constructive interference, the wave's amplitude or the, um, the peaks are aligning the troughs are aligning and what that will do will be increase the amplitude of that wave. So here's an image of that. Here are two waves that are aligned, okay? We say that they're in phase. So we see the peak of this wave and the peak of this wave are aligned. The trough of this wave and the trough of this wave are aligned and what will happen is is an additive property where the amplitude will be increased. So now we have a wave with a higher amplitude and a um, you know, l lower trough when they interfere like that. And this is called constructive interference. Um, if it's not constructive interference, it might be destructive interference. Now, a destructive interference are waves which are out of phase. So what does that mean, a wave being out of phase? Well, if the peak of one trough and the, um, sorry, the peak of one wave and the trough of the next wave are aligned like this, the height of the one and the depth of the other will cancel each other out and we will end up with no waves. So waves when they're coming in together can actually you know, be no wave at all because of the way they interact. That's called destructive interference. Now, there is a pattern that's set up by this um, called a diffraction pattern. So it, this, sorry, it's not because of that. I'll, I gotta get into something else in just a minute. So let's get this concept of what diffraction is. Diffraction is this process of bending a wave when it passes through a slit. So I've got this little slip, slit right here. Let's kind of blow it up and examine what's going on right here. When a wave approaches this slit, so this is a peak and then the trough and the peak and the trough and the peak and it hits that, that here, it will bend the wave out. So now it's going to come out of that way, out of that space, and it's going to spread out and it's going to bend. And that's what we call a diffraction, okay? The diffraction of that wave. So that's opposite of what we see down the bottom right of the screen. If something is approaching a slit that is just particles, okay? Let's say it's a sandstorm and the sand is being blown in the direction of these it's just particles. What will happen if the particle is approaching the slit, it'll just keep going straight on through that slit. And that is what we see with a particle. Now the reason these two things are in comparison with each other is because um, eventually we're going to see that light not only behaves as a wave and can get diffracted. It also can behave as a particle. So depending upon which behavior we're seeing, we will either see a diffractive pattern of that wave or we will see a particle behavior of that light. But we're not there yet. Just want to kind of note the differences of those two right here. Okay, so this only is going to happen, this diffractive pattern, if the slit is about the size of the wavelength. If the slit is much, much bigger, much, much smaller than the length of the wave, you're not going to see this bending occur. Okay, so now we're going to put the two concepts together. We have the idea of diffraction, and we're going to put it together with the concept of uh, interference. So we have one wave approaching our slits. But now we have two slits, okay? So I'm going to zoom in on just this, maybe. I can't remember how to do that. Okay, there you go. Zoom in on just this portion for just a minute. Okay, so it's a light source. The light is shining. I have two slits here. I have a slit at this point right here, and I have a slit at this point right here. When it hits the slit, it is going to diffract out. And when this hits the slit, it's going to diffract out. Now, eventually, these waves will bump into each other. Okay, if they bump in each other and their waves are, the peaks are aligned, what we will see is a increase 
in its energy and we will see a bright pattern. If the peak and the trough are aligned, then we're going to see a destructive pattern, okay, destructive interference, and we're going to see dark. Because of the ways, ways these waves come out, and I'm going to um, come back to where I can use my pen, okay, at some points when they align, there's going to be a area where they are constructive. The peak and the peak are touching each other. But there's also going to be points where this wave and the trough, and I want to let this represent the trough that's going down, and the peak are going to hit each other, and that's where we're going to see the darkness, okay? So anytime, this is a property of light, anytime light passes through two slits, and it's the same source of light, and they hit two slits, you're always going to see a very distinctive diffraction pattern. You are going to see um, destructive interference, and that's here. You're going to see constructive interference, and you're going to see a dark light, dark light, dark light pattern. So that is a property of light when it's passed through two slits. Any wave will do this, but this is an inherent property of the light. Now that we're on the world of electromagnetic radiation, we're going to be looking for this pattern from time to time throughout this chapter.